an infamous cult that feeds on the organs of its members. Snakes instead of genitals. Monsters as watchdogs. Time-traveling ancestors with superpowers. Fight, fight, and fight. All that awaits you in the following recap. Atticus, a Korean war veteran, accompanied by his childhood friend Letty and Uncle George, embarks on a journey to find his long-lost father, Montrose. They arrive at a large mansion, where they are greeted by a man with a disarming smile named William. He told them with a sinister undertone that they were expecting them and that he knows where his father is. After they spend the night, Atticus wakes up in a strange room, bruised and battered. It quickly becomes clear that they are being held captive by the wealthy and eccentric Braithwaite family. Tick anxiously asks William when his father will show up, but William could not provide a definite answer, only that he had left for Boston with Miss Braithwaite and the lawyer. George and Tick were skeptical, sensing that they were being deceived. They suspected that Montrose wasn't in Boston after all. Nevertheless, they ventured into the village to search for Montrose. As they walked, Tick heard a piercing whistle. His curiosity led him to a woman named Dell, who stood guard with two ferocious dogs. She remained tight-lipped about the whistle's purpose and revealed that she only guarded her meat supply in the village's only stone building. The sky turned crimson as the trio trudged back to the lodge, their minds consumed with fear and uncertainty. As they walked, George's mind raced back to something Dora, Tick's mother, had told him years ago. Dora spoke of her great-grandma named Hannah, who escaped from a house after a fire. George linked this to William's story about his ancestors, realizing that Hannah had run through the same woods they now stood in, pregnant with Braithwaite's child. Suddenly, two monstrous figures emerged from the shadows, encircling them like prey. As terror devoured their hearts, a glimmer of hope emerged. A woman named Christina galloped in on a horse, her whistle sending the beasts scampering back to the darkness from whence they came. With a swift command, Christina ordered Dell to lead Tick to her father's lab while George and Letty were led back to their rooms. After which their memories of the encounter were erased. Tick was escorted to Samuel's lab, where he was greeted by the gruesome sight of Samuel, William's father, undergoing a painful surgery. The room was filled with a stench of blood and sweat as Samuel's body was being sliced open, and his organ was being removed. As Samuel was sewn up, he rose to his feet and made a sharp remark about Tick's skin color, as if it was not up to his expectations. Then he pointed towards his favorite painting of Adam. Samuel believed that he was like Adam, who worked tirelessly to return to the paradise that existed before Eve brought chaos into the world. He saw himself as a visionary who would bring back order and restore the world to its former glory. The air in the lab was thick with tension and fear as Tick realized that he was in grave danger and that he needed to find allies if he was to survive. Atticus was outraged at Christina's revelation that she had spelled George and Letty to forget what they had witnessed. Christina tried to explain that the spell was not specifically targeted towards them but rather a general measure used to protect the Lodge's secrets. Despite Christina's resistance, Tick managed to persuade her to remove the spell from George and Letty. As their memories began to return, George and Letty screamed out for Tick, but Christina had already used her magic to lock him in his room. The sense of betrayal was overwhelming, and Tick could feel the anger boiling up inside him. He was trapped, alone, and isolated, with no way of knowing what was going to happen next. As Tick communicated with George through a series of knocks on the wall, he suddenly found himself thrust into a terrifying flashback from the war. He was being shot at and attacked by a Korean soldier, who was wielding a deadly knife. Despite being injured, Tick managed to disarm her and fought back with all his might. In a final, brutal act of self-defense, Tick snapped the soldier's neck. Meanwhile, George had a vision of his loved one, and Letty fantasized about an intimate time with Tick. At a crucial moment, a snake, like the one in the painting, jumped out of Tick's pants, once again hinting that Tick was a descendant of the Braith White line. The visions turned out to be entertainment for the hosts.
even something a little more than that. The bell rings and the trio exits their rooms. William tells them that dinner will be served in 15 minutes and that it's black tie only, as well as men only. After he leaves, Tick asks George who did they make him see. He says that it doesn't matter and tells that they have to stick together and that he's come across something that'll work in their favor. William escorts Tick and George into the dining hall with the other lodge members. Samuel joins them. Their founder, Titus Braithwaite, was a son of a first son. As Adam gave of his rib to create Eve, so did Titus give of himself to empower the founding members of the order. So Samuel honors him by giving a piece of himself over. His organ that was removed during the surgery is to be eaten by the lodge members. It turns out that men who are direct descendants of Titus Braithwaite are automatically high-ranking members known as Sons Among Sons, who can issue orders to regular members. Tick is the last blood heir of Titus Braithwaite, so with that, Tick orders everyone but Samuel to leave. Tick then tells Samuel to return his father. However, Samuel refuses. Tick and George stealthily make their way into the ominous stone silo, hoping to find Montrose. They search frantically, but all they come across is his abandoned flask. Suddenly, they're confronted by Dell, who's brandishing a loaded shotgun and calling them dumb animals. Before she can pull the trigger, Letty charges forward with a shovel and knocks her unconscious. George then realizes that Montrose must have dug his way out. They eventually find Montrose, but he's ungrateful for their rescue and denies needing their help. As they drive back to the lodge in Christina's luxurious silver sedan, an invisible barrier halts them in their tracks, causing them to crash. Samuel and Christina soon arrive, and the situation quickly spirals out of control. Samuel coldly shoots Letty, and she collapses to the ground, bleeding out in a matter of seconds. In a moment of pure malice, Samuel then forces Tick to choose who he will shoot next. When Tick refuses, Samuel shows no mercy and shoots George without hesitation. Later, Tick stands in a state of shock as the servant girls strip him of his clothes, washing off the blood that covers his body. Christina appears before him, revealing her father's twisted plan to open the door to the Garden of Eden and achieve eternal life. Tick's blood, as a direct descendant of Titus, is believed to be the key to making it happen. Tick questions Christina's loyalty to her father, who clearly doesn't care about her. But Christina admits that despite the unforgivable things they've done, she still comes running whenever they need her help. She watches through a portal as Letty rises from the dead, and assures Tick that her father will heal George as well but only if Tick willingly participates in the ceremony. Christina then hands him the official ring of members of the Order of Ancient Dawn and tells him that their destinies aren't predetermined by their fathers or grandfathers. Tick stands in the center of the room, surrounded by three conductors. His body trembles as Samuel recites the spell that would open the door to the Garden of Eden. The air crackles with electricity, and a bright light fills the room as the door opens. He sees his ancestor Hannah appear on the other side of the portal, and he can feel her energy pulsing through him. But something isn't right. The ceremony is tearing the lodge apart, causing the ground to shake and the walls to crack. Samuel and the other lodge members are turning to stone before Tick's eyes, and he realizes that the power they sought was too great for them to handle. Tick emerges from the collapsing building, with a trail of fire following behind him. Outside, he reunites with Letty, who delivers the heartbreaking news of George's passing. Tick's heart sinks as he looks inside a car and sees Montrose cradling George's lifeless body. Thanks for watching. What upset you the most in this video? Feel free to write in the comments. For more exciting stories, please subscribe.